Hello. In this video, we will talk about the fatal flaw of the Power BI's filter pane, and also how we can fix it with breadcrumbs. What fatal flaw I'm talking about? What the heck is a breadcrumb? Well, keep watching and you will find out. Well, the fatal flaw actually is pretty self-evident. Once I introduce filters to my page, I can make the selections for the filter conditions, and I'm actually a very big fan of the filter page, pane, and I'm um, uh, uh, in my latest designs, I tend to move all the slicers from the screen page itself into the filter pane. But uh, as much as I like the filter pane, we see a bunch of problems here. And the biggest problem is that as we make our selections and then we uh, minimize or collapse the filter pane or hide it, we no longer know what selections we've made. And that could be very confusing for the end user. The answer to this problem is to introduce breadcrumbs. And what a breadcrumb is, um, I'm using a um, uh, kind of very generic interpretation of that word, but basically a way for me to know what selections that I've made. So um, let's take a look at two breadcrumbs that I have in my case. So at the top, I have a breadcrumb for weeks, and at the bottom, I have a breadcrumb for brands. In order to be effective, breadcrumbs have to implement certain behavior. So for example, if I do not have anything selected, you could see that my weeks will say all weeks and my brands will say all brands. And as I start making my selections, so for example, I'm gonna pick a week. So I'm gonna say week one. We see that the title of the breadcrumb has changed because there's only one week selected. It's a singular, week one is selected. If I se select week one and two, now it'll say weeks one, two, if I select week one, two, three, and I could keep selecting. Sometimes you will be uh, limited by the real estate. So I've implemented a feature in this breadcrumb that as I add more than five values into my week selection, it will only display the first five. And then as I keep making selections, I will just see how many more I have selected. And I also implemented a similar thing for brands. So Right now, I don't have any brands selected. However, as soon as I start selecting brands, you see that right now I have one brand, so the brand says singular, brand 01. Now it's gonna change to brand 02. You notice that brands uh, occupy a lot more space than weeks, so I've limited the brand, brand breadcrumb to three, and as I select more brands, you see that now uh, in a breadcrumb it says that I have more than, so I have three and another three selected. Now with my filter pane hidden, I'm still able to have a breadcrumb for my weeks and my brands. And that makes it much easier for and less confusing for the end user to understand which selections have been made and which numbers they're looking at. Now that you've seen uh, the issue that I'm trying to address and the behavior of the solution, let us take a look at the two variables that I've implemented to help support those breadcrumbs. So the first one, uh, we're gonna take a look at the bread, brand breadcrumb. Uh, by the way, um, I will post uh, the code for these variables on my blog, and the, blog, and the link will be in the description of this video. So you will be able to go to the blog, find the, uh, all of the codes there, and then you can customize it to your situation. So let's take a look at this, uh, at this code here and understand how this works. So the first line here, uh, var max length is the variable that allows me to specify how many uh, values I will show before I stop showing plus extra. So with brands, I'm only showing three. With weeks, I will show five. So in a weeks calculation, you will be able to see five and not three. So let's go back to brands. The next one is I need to know how many total valuable, var values I've selected. And the way we do that is we implement a number of values variable. And what it does is gonna take a look at all of the values in the brand column, and then it's gonna use the count rows functions to count how many uh, have been um, uh, selected. So in this case, this will only count those that have been selected. It will not count those that have not been selected. The next step is we're gonna start with our title so this is where we're saying, if I've only selected one value, we will say brand. Otherwise, 
we will say brands as plural. The next code is we're going to get our top five. Um, so I call it top five, so I should probably call it top n values. So in this case, we're just going to get, um, we're using concatenate x function. And what that does is going to look into our brands values and it's going to get the top three of those. So in our case, we have max length. So I should probably do this to make it correct. Okay, so it's going to look at the uh, top three here and return them into the uh, into this variable. I call it five values because I did the weeks first. So this will hold the, the ones we're going to spell out. And then the extra variable will calculate how many more are left. So if I've selected 10, my um, max value is three. So 10 minus three is seven. It's greater than zero. So I have more um, selected than, than I allow to show. Therefore, I'm just gonna uh, uh, do a plus sign and then show the, differ the, the difference between, um, so that'll be seven in this case, so 10 minus three. And then the last piece, what I do is I wanna check whether I've selected all of them or none of them. And the way this works is I'm gonna do count rows on all values in brand and compare them with how many are selected. So if I have 10 brands and I have 10 selected, then it'll just say all brands. If I have selected less or fewer brands that I have total, then it's gonna spell out the, the title the way you saw it work. So very same um, logic works for weeks. So the only difference is we're using weeks instead of brands. And um, again, we're starting with number of uh, maximum number of uh, weeks we're going to spell out. So in, in our case, it's five. We get number of selected values. We check whether we only have one or more so that we could um, make our title plural or singular. Then we're going to get our five top weeks that have been selected. Then we're going to check how many more are left. And that's going to go into the variable called extra. And at the very end, we're going to say, okay, let's make sure that uh, we've selected less than all. So here we're going to looking at all unique values in date week. Then we're comparing with how many are selected. And if it's the same, then that means that we've selected all of them or none of them. Uh, so that means we cleared the filter when I say none of them. So if all of them are selected, then we just say weeks, all weeks. Otherwise we spell out our title. And now we're back to the published version of our report. You can see that, um, again, just to remind, so we have selected weeks one, two, and three. We didn't make any selections for, for our brands. So it's very easy for the user who is looking at these numbers to understand and to remember what has been selected in the filter pane. Again, I will post the link to the all the formulas and calculations in my blog in the description of this video. Hope you found it to be informative and looking forward to see you back again soon. Thanks. Bye.